Hey guys, Alexander here. In this video, we're going to be covering the analysis of variance or ANOVA of the matrix form of the multiple linear regression model. So before we start off, let's start with the very fundamentals of ANOVA. So ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. ANOVA, analysis of variance. So we're analyzing the variance of the data and the regression model. And from that, we are formulating some idea of, is our overall regression model really helpful? Is it statistically significant or is it not? So let's start off with these following sum of squares. Now, the first one that, that we will see is SSR. Now, please be careful. There are very various people that use different definitions and different notations for this. But when I say SSR, I'm referring to the sum of squares of the regression model. Some people also call this the explained sum of squares or the sum of squares explained. So what this SSR is, is it's the summation of yi hat minus y bar squared and this is from i is equal to one all the way up to n sse in my formulation is the sum of squared or the sum of squared errors the error sum of squares or that is the formulation that we are going to be using here so the sum of squared errors is equal to the summation of yi minus yi hat squared. So it's half the square of our deviation from our actual to the predicted, predicted value. And if we were to visualize this on a, of a graph of our regression model, if we simply have a linear regression model, here is our simple linear regression model. Here is a data point, yi, and the point directly below it on the regression, the fitted regression line, that point is called yi hat. So this sum of squared errors captures all these deviations from our, from the observed yi all the way to our fitted yi, and it squares these and sums them all up across our model. And lastly, we have SST, the sum of squares total, or the total sum of squares the total sum of squares or the sum of squared total. So this is equal to the summation of yi minus y bar squared. And that's SST. So here I've quoted things to you in a formulation that you should be familiar with, which is the scalar form or the usual way in which regression models are first presented to you when you encounter them. But we're interested in looking at the matrix form. So when we're talking about the matrix form, Let's start off with the SSE. SSE is equal to, in the matrix formulation, epsilon hat transpose multiplied by epsilon hat. And this is equal to Y, which is our vector of our Ys, Y1, Y2, all the way up to Yn, minus X times beta hat. And all of this transpose, the transpose of Y minus X beta hat, where X is our design matrix, and beta hat is our matrix, is our um, coefficients beta zero hat, beta one hat, all the way up to beta p hat. And SSE is equal to y minus x beta hats transpose multiplied by y minus x beta hat. That's one way in which you can write SSE. So you can calculate that if you have, if you can calculate the product of these two matrices, you can easily calculate um, the sum of squared errors. So the next step is to calculate the sum of squared total or the total sum of squares. And this is equal to, in the scalar form, the summation of yi minus y bar squared. And this can be written as the summation of, let's expand the square, so it becomes the summation of yi squared minus two yi y bar plus plus y bar squared. So if we expand this, this square, we get yi squared minus 2yi y bar plus y bar squared. And if we then 
Simplify this, it becomes the summation of yi squared, negative two times y bar times the summation of yi. You notice I've brought the y bar out because it's a constant, it's independent of this summation from i equals one to n. So we can bring it out. And then we should not forget the plus the summation of y bar squared. So let's simplify here. Summation of y i squared, well, we can't simplify that too much. That's the summation of y i squared. Negative two y bar times the summation of y i. So the summation of y i, we've already seen that that can be written as n y bar. So this means that we have negative two times n of y bar times y bar, which leaves us with y bar squared, plus the summation from i is one to n of y bar squared. So we're summing n y bar squared, that leaves us with n y bar squared. And if we simplify all of this, we get it's equal to the summation of y i squared minus n y bar squared. Now I want to comment more about this because now we've got it into some form that is something we can easily write with the matrix form. So the summation of y i squared can be written as y transpose y. So we're multiplying the, the transpose of the vectors y1, y2, all the way up to yn, multiplied by y1, y2, all the way up to yn. And we need to then subtract n y bar squared. Now, if we're presented with um, the matrices x transpose x and x transpose y, I've already shown you in, a, in previous videos that it, we can find n from the matrix x transpose x. n is always the first entry in the matrix x transpose x. So if you are given the matrix x transpose x, you can quickly find the n from there and plug it in there. And the matrix x transpose y, its first entry always corresponds to the summation of yi, which is equal to n y bar. So if we have this, then we can see that we can easily calculate n y bar squared as equal to the x transpose y's first entry in the, the first row in the first column, we square that and then we divide it by the first entry of the matrix X transpose X. And that leaves us with N Y bar squared is equal to N squared Y bar squared divided by N, which is equal to N Y bar squared. Okay, so that's how we can quickly calculate the sum of squares total and also the sum of squared errors for our matrix form of the multiple linear regression model. Now you'll notice I've not talked about the sum of squares of the regression or the SSR, and that's because SSR is quite hard to calculate by hand. So what we typically do is we use the fact that the sum of square total or the total sum of squares is equal to SSR plus SSE. So then we know that SSR has to be equal to SST minus SSE. So that's how we will usually calculate the sum of squares of the regression model. So SSR is usually calculated by taking SST and subtracting it by SSE. Okay. So then we need to come to something that is very important and something that you will see a lot in regression analysis, and that is an ANOVA table. So in an ANOVA table, if we construct it in this manner, you'll typically have the first column representing our source of variation. Now the first source, if we order it in this manner, then the ANOVA table is very effective in helping us to calculate the statistics. And this is the order in which you should usually order your uh, ANOVA table. You should have the first, the first row for the source of variation being from your regression model. The second one being the source of variation due to errors in your regression model. And then the last row being the total. So the first sum of squares is the sum of squares of the regression model. So it's SSR. The second one is SSE, and the last one is SST. And SST always has to equal to SSR plus SSE. The degrees of freedom for our ANOVA table, so for SSR, its degrees of freedom is P, because we have P regressors we're, that we're interested in. We are going to be interested in beta 1, beta 2, all the way up to beta P. So that's why we have P regressors that we're interested in for the degrees of freedom. The sum of squared total has a degree of freedom of N minus one, and we can see why that's the case since we've got the summation of YI minus Y bar squared. So we've got this Y bar that we are estimating. 
So that's why we have a degree of freedom of n minus one. And if we know that um, our total degrees of freedom should be n minus one and our regression degree of freedom should be p, then the sum of squared errors uh, degree of freedom should be n minus p minus one. Because if we add all these up together, they should total up to n minus one. So n minus p minus one plus p leaves us with n minus one degrees of freedom. So the mean square that we then calculate is the ratio of our sum of squares and the degrees of freedom. So firstly, MSR, which is the mean squared of the regression, is equal to SSR divided by P. And mean squared error, MSE, is equal to SSE divided by N minus P minus 1. And you've seen this before as this estimator of the variance for our regression model that we have used before. The estimator to that we calculate instead of using the sigma squared because we can't estimate this when we're dealing with the variances of our regressions, regressors. So MSE is SSE divided by N minus P minus one. And this is also often used as sigma squared hat. Sum of squared total, there's also one here, mean squared total is equal to SST divided by its degree of freedom, which is N minus one. And what is this equal? Well, if we look at the formula, mean squared total is equal to SST divided by N minus one. If we write it again in this format, it's one over N minus one multiplied by what's the formula for SST? It's the summation of YI minus Y bar squared. Well, doesn't this look really familiar to us? We've got a sample mean here. We've got N minus one as the divider. So doesn't this look like the formula for sample variance? And indeed it is. This is the sample variance of our vector Y. So this is the sample variance of all our dependent variables. And that is equal to one over N minus one times the summation of YI minus Y bar squared, which is equal to SST over N minus one. So if you were given already the sample variance of your data, you can easily calculate the sum of squared total by simply saying N minus one multiplied by your sample variance. So don't be caught out or surprised when you see sample variance given and you are aware of your number of data entries in your sample and then expect it to be calculated uh, to calculate the sum of squared total. It's simply the product of uh, n minus one, which is your number of samples minus one, multiplied by the sample variance of your um, dependent variable. Okay, so once you have all of these, we can get proceed to the most important part, which is our F f test or the value of our f statistic and the value of the f statistic is determined by a ratio of the mean squared of the regression divided by the mean squared error so f is equal to msr over mse so mean squared of regression over the mean squared error and that is equal to ssr divided by p divided by sse over n minus p minus one. And this follows an F distribution with p numerator degrees of freedom, which you can see from over here, and n minus p minus one denominator degrees of freedom, which you can see over here. So if you see, sometimes you'll see an F distribution as FPQ, well, p is the numerator one, and that's going to be the number of regressors from your one to p. So we're excluding the intercept uh, as a regressor coefficient. And q, which is your denominator degrees of freedom, is going to be n minus p minus one. So that is the value of your f statistic. It's the ratio of the mean squared of the regression to the mean squared error. And that follows an f distribution with p numerator degrees of freedom and n minus p minus one denominator degrees of freedom. 
So that's great. We've got a test statistic now. Well, what are we even interested in using this test statistic for? Well, we use this test statistic to test the following hypothesis. And our null hypothesis is that beta 1 is equal to beta 2 equal to beta 3 all the way up to beta p. And all of these regressors are equal to zero. So our null hypothesis is that all of our regressors are equal to zero, essentially meaning that they have no statistic, statistical significance. This is tested against the alternative hypothesis H1 that H0 is not true. So be careful here when you see this formulation of, the, of this hypothesis. This hypothesis says that jointly all of these variables, if we take all of them together, that they are not different from zero, jointly, all together. Some of these variables may actually be brilliant in predicting our model, and some of them may be worthless or very detrimental to our regression model's accuracy. So when you're doing this test, you're testing if the overall model is statistically significant or not. So that's all that it is about an F-test uh, uh, resulting from an analysis of variance. And then once we have set up this null hypothesis and we have calculated our, we filled in our ANOVA table, we've calculated our F statistic, and we can reject the null hypothesis if and only if, so we reject H0, if and only if the value of the F statistic, which is the mean squared of the regression over the mean squared error, is greater than an F, the F critical value, which is from an F distribution at our level of significance alpha, with P numerator degrees of freedom and N minus P minus one denominator degrees of freedom. So all of this work with this ANOVA model, all of this deriving of SSR, SSE, SST, all of it led to us to fling in this table, calculating an F, uh, F statistic, using that F statistic in a hypothesis test to test if the overall regression model is statistically significant or not. And then we can finally decide to reject the null hypothesis or not if the value of our F statistic is greater than the critical value of an F from an F distribution with P numerator degrees of freedom and N minus P minus one denominator degrees of freedom. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any comments or any doubts, please leave them in the comments. Work Commander, out.